So the other day, I shared a picture of myself from back when I was competing in bodybuilding. I was a lot bigger back then, obviously. It's quite interesting. I take it for granted and in my mind just expect that all of you kind of know about my history. But the fact is, there are over 100,000 new subscribers to this channel in the last couple of months alone. And about 90% of you watching this as subscribers have only been around for less than three months. So most of you on here have no idea of my backstory, of what I was doing before YouTube, whether it was my bodybuilding years or my international touring or how I created my gym space and of course my training background and history. And that's a little bit more of what I want to be able to share with you guys over this style of YouTube video. Now, whenever I share pictures of my past, it always prompts the question of whether I miss being that big and if I'm ever going to return to that. And most of all, how did I cope with losing muscle in the first place? The truth is, I am far happier now than I ever was all those years ago. And I'll contribute that directly to losing a substantial amount of muscle mass and the journey that that took me on. So when I did my final bodybuilding competition, it was 2015 and I'd just turned 24. I'd been training for about 10 years at that point and there were a few different things that were driving my behavior over those 10 years. Like most people, I started training first and foremost because I wasn't happy with how I looked. I was a typical short, skinny Asian kid back in high school who sucked at sports and anything physical. I wasn't even that good at maths or science either, so I was really not doing well at fitting into that stereotype either. Now, whether we're aware of it or not, a lot of the insecurities from those formative years in childhood or adolescence, they wind up driving a lot of our behavior much later in life. And for many people, if you continue to drift through life without acknowledging it and dealing with the real roots of it all, it can lead to a lot of antisocial and unfulfilling behaviors. And speaking from personal experience, a very dissatisfied and unhappy life. For me, I justified a lot of what I was doing in bodybuilding as learning about the body and loving the process of training and improvements. And that's not completely untrue because I absolutely do love everything that goes into training. It's all about self-improvement and development, all about discovery and experimentation and learning about your own body. But I'd be lying if I said that that was the only reason why I was doing it all. The big elephant in the room for most people, including myself, was pursuing all of these goals of building muscle and getting leaner for external validation or to seek the approval of others. And ultimately to finally feel like you're a part of something or that you really fit in somewhere. So somewhere along the line, you start to believe that if you looked a certain way, you'll finally be comfortable and secure in your own skin. The ironic part of this whole thing is that the whole industry of bodybuilding and fitness is predominantly fueled by creating insecurities and comparisons to others to make you feel less than yourself. So for me, after five years of competitive bodybuilding, it got to a point where I started weighing up the opportunity costs of it all. While I do believe you can always learn more, and I still learn more every single day about training and the human body, bodybuilding itself and competing in bodybuilding was no longer teaching me anything new. I'd gotten to a point where I'd seen what my body was capable of and I was pretty satisfied with that process. I knew that I wasn't going to be competing in Mr. Olympia one day and I never had any real goal of doing that anyway. I'm not willing to put my health on the line or to push my body to those extremes to get to that kind of point. I was also starting to not really enjoy the whole bodybuilding lifestyle in terms of how it becomes so all-consuming and isolating. On the other hand as well, I was also extremely frustrated with myself for no particular reason. And my relationship with my girlfriend at the time was suffering from neglect and my overall obsession with bodybuilding and how I looked. Now, this didn't happen overnight, but over time I started to focus more on my business. In 2015, I already had a successful personal training and online coaching business as I'd been personal training for about six years by that point. And there are a lot of opportunities opening up to me with doing workshops around Australia and taking on even, even more clients. I also started to get a lot more into studying around nutrition, biochemistry, anatomy, and physiology. So over the course of the next couple of years, I started to focus more on those aspects of my life and a lot less on my training. 
Once I started doing more workshops, I'd go through an entire weekend and would barely eat, as my brain functioned far better in a fasted state or on very low calories. And that's when it all started to happen. It started with a few back-to-back -back weekends locally in Australia doing events, but eventually it grew into months at a time on the road internationally, where I'd follow a typical routine of teaching over the weekend and barely eating. Then I would spend the Monday recovering and resting. I'd also spend the Friday before an event stressing about everything and barely eating. And I'd usually lose a day or two midweek because I'd be traveling between cities. So I only really had maybe two or three days a week where I could devote to my training which of course meant my physique took a humongous nosedive. Now, naturally, I wasn't completely comfortable with it all at first. I knew it would happen as I was barely training and barely eating, so of course my body would go back to its natural set point of being a small, skinny Asian. I was pretty terrified of this at first. I thought to myself, how can I be teaching about training and building muscle when I'm smaller than the majority of those people in my workshops? For a while, I really felt like I wasn't deserving of the position that I was in. But then I noticed something really interesting. It didn't matter that much. Whether I had an extra 10 pounds of muscle or not was not the difference between whether I was able to run an event, know what I knew, have a conversation with somebody, or put myself out there to organize another event. It didn't make a difference at all in my eyes between the engagement that I was getting from the students in my workshops. I started to realize that people weren't just coming to a workshop or following me on social media because I had a nice physique or a lot of muscle mass. They were really there for me. They were there for how I explained things, how I broke down concepts and how I taught and connected with them. So I started to really focus on that and directed all of my attention to doing the thing that I'd been missing the most up until that point which was learning and developing my sense of self and who I am and how to connect with those around me better. So this realization gave me a lot of freedom to start to relax a lot of the unnecessary strictness that I conditioned myself to through my years of bodybuilding. And I started to go out to eat more, to train less, to explore the world, meet and connect with new people and do all the things that I really wanted to do. And that's what truly made me happy. It had sort of come full circle in a way. After so many years of training and building my body in an effort to overcome my insecurities and to create connections that I wanted, that I craved when I was growing up, all of these things started to come after I'd lost a lot of the gains I made in the gym, which I'd built up to try to create connections in the first place. Now, this is my own personal story around training and my physique that isn't necessarily going to be the same path that you will take with yours. But I think the most important thing to start to bring awareness to is, why are you doing all of this in the first place? What is it that makes you go to the gym and scroll through endless amounts of workouts and videos on YouTube about training and to put yourself through the rigors of dieting with your nutrition? Now, I don't think any of those things are bad whatsoever. I mean, I still do all these things to some degree to this day, but I've also got a very different mentality around it all. Now that I've removed a lot of the insecurity and subconscious drivers around it, and now that I've taken the time to create and foster the deeper, deeper personal connections that I want to, to those people around me, I can go into a dieting phase or approach my training as a whole for one pure reason, because I truly love it. And when there are times where I don't really feel like training or don't feel like being as strict with my nutrition, I've got no problem with stopping or changing things up altogether. Training, the gym, and my physique don't really have the same hold over me like they used to. I love to feel good and to have energy, and that's why I train. I genuinely enjoy the process of training and pushing myself in the gym most of the time. I like the way that I look right now, but I wouldn't freak out if I was a few kilos lighter or a few kilos bigger. None of this is really done for anyone else's approval or to fill an unmet need or insecurity anymore. And that's what's made me truly happy and free with everything that I do. You know, it's kind of weird to actually to say that, that I'm truly happy and free with everything that I do, because a little part of me is still kind of uncomfortable, uncomfortable with putting out a video like this because I feel like it won't do anywhere near as well or be as well received as a typical generic workout or training tip video that most of you started subscribing and following along to my channel for. Because I guess no matter how hard you try, you can never truly be free from those feelings of vulnerability and insecurity. It really is one of those unifying characteristics that we all share as 
human beings.